Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixinperfect and although there are tons of ways to sharpen your photos in Photoshop, the high pass technique is a special one. And there's a reason why it's special, we're gonna discover why, but it has a huge problem, a major problem. First of all, let me show you what it actually is. So here we are in Photoshop and let's say we have to sharpen this image. When it comes to sharpening, selective sharpening is the key to a great image. Now what is selective sharpening? Let me show that to you. Let's zoom into the image. Have a look at the eyes. We would want to sharpen the eyes more than the skin, right? We don't want to sharpen the skin so much and make it rough and tough like a man, right? She is a lady. We would also want to sharpen the lips more than the skin. To be able to do that, we need to add different levels of sharpening. And high pass does that best. Of course, there are other ways to sharpen in Photoshop like Smart Sharpen. Let's say we make a copy of the background layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Then we simply go to Filter, Sharpen and then Smart Sharpen. That's how cool you get three sliders, amount radius and reduce noise, all of that stuff. You sharpen it a little more, hit OK. That's nice. But it applies sharpness to the image as an image. There's very less possibility of stacking up like High Pass. Let me show you how to do the High Pass thing. To do the high pass for the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J, right? And then we need to desaturate it because we don't want any coloration while we sharpen. Press Ctrl Shift U, Command Shift U to desaturate it. Then simply go to filter, convert for smart filters and then hit OK. All right, it converts this into a smart object so that we can change the values of high pass later. Now go to filter, other and then high pass. Right now we just zoom in and you can just increase the radius and stop at the point where you begin to see the halos. So I would stop right there where everything is accentuated but not the halos. Increase it, 3.4 is fine for this one, hit OK and then change the blend mode from normal to overlay. You can also choose to apply high pass after changing the blend mode, completely your choice. Now here is an essential thing. You can hold the Alt or Option, click on the mask button and just take the brush and sharpen just the eyes. So paint white on the eye area. Now maybe you want to sharpen the lips with a different number. So you would make a copy of this one, Control or Command J. And now you would change the high pass value and just make the mask white. With the mask selected, white as the foreground color, press Alt Backspace or Option Delete. The mask is now white. Now double click on the high pass. You can change it to something else for the lips. So for the lips, let's say I want maybe 4.6 or something. Hit OK and select the mask. Press Ctrl or Command I. Now take the brush, white as the foreground color. You just paint on the lips. For the skin, you choose something else. For the nose, you choose something else. You get the idea. But the high pass has one major problem. It's a huge problem that it does not have an amount slider. Of course, you can decrease the value of sharpening by decreasing the opacity, but there is no amount slider. Of course, you can control the radius, no amount. So let's delete all of that. Sorry about the horn in the background. Let's delete all of that. And we're gonna start afresh. Control or Command J, desaturate it, and then filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK, that's all nice. You change the blend mode from normal to overlay, and then you apply high pass, filter, other, high pass. All right, so for the eyes, we did 3.2, and hit OK, that's nice. Now have a look at the eyes. Suppose I want to decrease the sharpening. Of course, you can decrease the opacity, that's all nice. But what if I wanna go beyond 100? The problem is, I would have to duplicate the layer. Select the layer, press Ctrl or Command J, and it increases the sharpness, but it creates an extra layer. So what can we do? And this is the main part of the tutorial. Since high pass just increases the contrast around the edge, why not add some contrast just to the high pass? And to be able to do that, all we need to do is this. It's very simple. With the high pass layer selected, and maybe you're just doing the eyes, you can name it eyes. Go to image, adjustments, and brightness contrast. Make sure legacy is checked. We're gonna use the legacy, simply because it amplifies the contrast more than without the legacy. Now if you increase the contrast, have a look, the amount simply increases. You don't have to create extra layers. So this is 
a very nice combination of Hiroke. This is a very nice combination of sharpening layer. You can use that to stack up. You can increase or decrease the value with brightness contrast. You can anytime change the radius with high pass. So if you want to change the radius, double click on the high pass, hit OK, and simply change the radius. If you want to increase or decrease the amount, hit OK, double click on the brightness contrast, and you can simply even decrease the amount if you want to. So you get all in one. And that's why we invent the amount slider for the high pass technique. Now, this is very complex, right? Why not have an action for it? Go ahead, in the description, you will find a link to download the action to do all of this automatically. So I'm going to open up my actions by going to Windows and then Actions. So this is the action over here, Sharpness with Control, select that action and just play that action. It's going to create that layer for you. It's going to ask you what radius you want. So you can choose the radius of your choice for your kind of image and hit OK. And then it asks you the contrast. You can just play with the amount and then hit OK. It does everything for you. Isn't that awesome? So that's how you get the amount slider even for a high pass. I hope this tutorial helped you in some way or the other. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.